Welcome, this is Sean Roberts. I am Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Mark Maxim. He is the Director of Platform Services at Lacuna and also at Ellison Associates. Uh, the, the big examples that are out there that Congress is, is uh, toying with, um, Facebook, um, Google, probably right. Amazon being <clears throat> the biggest, yeah. Apple, I guess, probably in the mix there, um, is that uh, specifically around, I'll use Facebook as the, the easiest example, um, the, the ability to get data in and out, and not only the quantity, but the quality of it, is, um, uh, isn't it w what people would like it to be, uh, specifically um, where it comes to uh, uh, my access as a user to my, my relationship data. Um, right. not only I not get it out of there, but um, I can't necessarily uh, tell Twitter to use Facebook's um, uh, my relationships on tw uh, Facebook for Twitter, which right. would really allow um, smaller startups and uh, new, uh, more interesting um, uh, combinations of businesses. Right. If I, as a user, had the ability to grant Twitter access to that data, um, so what what are your thoughts about um, how? If we wanted to, um, for instance, ensure that me as a user, I could grant Twitter that access through Facebook's API, um, how would we do that? Would it be an OMF? Would it be the FCC? Would it be something else? I mean, not OMF specifically, but OMF is an is archetype. What sure. Thoughts? Well, it's an interesting question that I don't have a super well thought out answer for. Um, let me answer an adjacent question, which is, Sure. Um, if you're Facebook, why aren't you already engaging in behaviors like that? Um, if there's any sort of demand for it at all, if it gives them the opportunity to sort of head off, you know, being harassed later, or even like having a deal with the threat of being broken up, I'm Facebook, why don't I just go and do it? Well, the answer is it's complex, right? Like they don't know on any given day, like when there's a whole lot of companies that grew up in the era of like, well, if we just like get a bunch of people, we'll figure out how to make money. Right. Um, you know, this was the sort of monetizing clicks theory back in the day. And of course, obviously Facebook has a much, much more sophisticated internal model now of, of where their, their money comes from and, and how they make it or whatever. Um, but every aspect of that monetization is based on the data that you're talking about right now. So if mm -hmm. I'm Facebook and I'm like, hmm, do I make it easier for literally anybody to get my hands on this data? Is that likely to be good or bad for me? They might know with for certain it'll be bad, but they might not know, in which case they're not going to be like, eh, let's just do it anyway, right? Like, you know, the people that run Facebook, you know, like everybody at a, every company, you know, have a fiduciary responsibility to try to make as much money as possible. I mean, that's right. the sociopathy of the corporation, right? Like, and that's built into the system from the ground up. And making any sort of move that might jeopardize their business model uh, or have to throw out the one they have and go figure out another one, you know, they don't know if or when their current business model is going to collapse. They don't know what the next one looks like, or they might, and they're keeping it sort of in the wings and preparing for it or what have you. But like, they're not the same company they were two years ago, which is not the same company they were when they started, which is, you know, and so on. <clears throat> so, same for AOL. <laughs> right. That had the same problem, just a... Right. They died because uh, dial-ups stopped being a thing or a thing. Well, that, that's an example of a company that was sort of the anti-Facebook. Facebook and Google and others have been pretty nimble in terms of staying out in front of uh, whatever it is that's their bread and butter. And Apple is actually a really good example you know, as well. You know, Apple for the longest time was, oh, we're a computer company, right? How much money they make on computers now? Right. Like, and they're even trying to get out of like relying too much on the phone business. They want to be a software services, iTunes, you know, the store, all that stuff. Right. Like, and the, the opportunities to stay ahead of the market are also the opportunities to stay ahead of the regulators. Um, mm. So yeah. you know, they're, they're both, um, you know, like you have to be even gigantic organic companies like Amazon and Apple are incredibly nimble, right? Like the moment they sniff another way of raking in more monies, again, back to the sociopathy of the corporation, that's what they go do. Um, 
and they're really, really, really good at it. That's why they're so big. So okay. if you're trying to, you know, um, regulate them in terms of what sort of data do they provide? Well, you know, most people these days are pretty locked in on the, um, it's all about the data. It's not about, it's not about the atoms. It's all about the bits. I'm not going to do anything if I'm Facebook to make it easier for somebody else to come in and take those little, you know, other uh, revenue opportunities. I'm going to hold them for my own. And sure. there's also a completely complementary um, issue there, which is if you look back at all of the kerfuffle over Cambridge Analytica is that Facebook had ways to pull a lot of data out there. In fact, one of my favorite Facebook apps back in the day would show me like a little drawing of my social network or whatever, because I could pull all that stuff out and graph it on a thing. That's what Cambridge Analytica used, you know, to influence is the strongest word I'll say the, you know, the 2016 elections. Um, you know, again, I'm not like super deep on what they did and didn't do, but I, I smelled a lot of the smoke around that. And well, they certainly made some money off of it. I mean, they certainly made some money off of it or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know ultimately what effects it did it or didn't have. I just know that a lot of people got really bent out of it. And you know that institutionally, Facebook was like, oh, hell no, let's not ever go through that sort of PR nightmare again. Because, you know, I mean, one of the reasons people buy from Amazon is because they trust them. Like, you know, maybe Amazon is doing horrible things behind the scenes, but their veneer is, I click on a thing and I'm going to have it in two days. That's trust. If I get my app, my iPhone, I know that it's basically going to work. That's trust. I know that, you know, Google, I'm going to get like, you know, maybe not the best answers possible, but like totally reasonable answers from the search engine. That's trust. So, you know, anything that smells bad from a trust perspective is going to be a flank that these companies are not going to open themselves up to. In fact, like if you look at Apple's recent billboards all up and down, you know, Highway 101 in and out of San Francisco, you know, the ones that aren't about, you know, the camera quality are about privacy. Like that's their brand now, right? Yep. They're not going to jeopardize that. Facebook ain't going to go back on that. So these, you know, open data standards or whatever, I mean, this has been one of the huge kerfuffles around what LA is trying to do about data management, that despite the fact that, you know, Uber and Lyft and other, you know, hypothetically regulated entities um, are in possession of insane amounts of your personal data, the idea that the city should get like a tiny fraction of that in order to be able to perform their regulatory function causes people to wig out. Like I went to Sacramento and listened in on hearings and you know, some person from the EFF of an organization that I have contributed money to right. got up and said, well, this is, you know, what's next, you know, putting, you know, ankle bracelets on everybody. I mean, that's what they want, isn't it? That's what they want. And I'm like, small jump. <laughs> well, it's just offensive. And I was really, really irritated to like, cause I at least want it on my wrist. I want it on my ankle. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the hyperbole of it without the context of what's it for and how thoughtful is the city and what does the city already have? The you know, city already has plenty of data that they know how to manage. This, this portrayal of the city is a bunch of sort of, you know, the technological equivalent of a bunch of bumbling hicks, you know, we'll never be able to store my data. Well, I mean, hey, we were talking earlier about consent decrees, you know, the city of Los Angeles ain't operating under a descent, consent decree to let outside regulators examine all of their privacy practices. Uber is, I've read that piece of work like Uber got in so much trouble for internally sharing data and let, you know, employees stalking ex-girlfriends and just crazy right. things, right? And like, nobody's up in arms about that. The EFF isn't all like getting up in Uber's face about it. They're going to Sacramento to poop on what I'm working on. It's really annoying. And, you know, I'll admit I'm, you know, a little bit um, self-centered on that particular topic. But um, well, again, <laughs> coming back to earlier topics, like right. <laughs> the, the notion that like every time you know, I hear somebody talk about something where I'm a subject matter expert because it's just really like, oh, you're so close or, oh, you're totally missing the point or, you know, just, you know, and because people are looking to score points and grind their own axes and you can't be an expert on everything. So it's just, it's hard. It's hard. Life is complicated. Well, yeah. The world is complicated. And so if getting back to what to do, I'll just use Facebook as the, as the, the toy <laughs> sure. to beat with for right now, um, lack of a better one. Um, if, if we want something less than 
a big heavy handed approach that Facebook has to be broken up into many pieces because of X, Y, and Z issues, which of course there's many, privacy just being one of them. But, um, and the portability of being data probably being the second yeah. biggest. Mm -hmm. um, something less than that, what, um, today we basically have almost no um, uh, regulatory oversight of the way Facebook works, which you know obviously Facebook is happy to continue with, except yeah. for uh, privacy um, being the, the exclusion or the exception there. Right. So if, if we want to push into that with some sort of oversight, some sort of regulatory relief for not only the companies that want to work work with that Facebook data, which is obviously right. a goldmine uh, for and um, right. one of the crown jewels for Facebook. And give uh, by giving users more control over not only my personal data, whether or not it resides and who has access to it in Facebook, but also my relationships. Um, right. And allowing other companies, I use Twitter's example, um, uh, access to that information so that they can better compete, um, right. as as um, as opposed to the way they can now. Do you think that's in, I would assume the API would be, um, or, or an API or multiple APIs that Twitter would manage would be that mechanism. Do you think something like the FCC could, is capable of doing that? Or do you think it's more of something like a nonprofit or maybe both? Well, I'm not sure what the right structure to address perceived problems is. I think that you have to be really clear on what the problem is first, and then you can start talking about solutions. Cause I feel like when you have like a justice department and kind of like, sometimes it feels like the only tool anybody thinks that, you know, certainly the federal government has is break up the company, right? Like I hear that and I'm like, break Facebook up into what? I mean, like, sure you could peel off, I don't know, WhatsApp or Instagram or, or whatever, and that would be actually reducing the amount of value that the company can offer, honestly, because having those integrated, you know, has some advantages. Um, but also like, okay, so you've reduced it. Let's say you get rid of everything that Facebook does except like its core product, Facebook. Right. What are you going to break it up into? The front end and the back end? Like, it just doesn't make yeah. any sense, right? Like the same thing, if you go and break up Apple, what are you going to break up Apple into? Like the phone company and the music company? Maybe. But the value that Apple brings is integrating all that stuff to where my phone is not a computer, even though it is, it's an appliance that just works. And people are like, oh, but Android, it's so much more, you can configure it and fiddle with it and whatever. I'm like, I, you know, I write software for a living and I know that some people love to be able to tinker with their phone. I tinker on my laptop. I tinker with web applications and servers. I don't want my phone to be something that I'm also wondering if I've got the latest version or I've you know screwed something up or whatever. I just want it to work. And that's why I don't want to sound like an ad for Apple here. And I know there's a lot of people that love their Androids and whatever. I just sure. want the thing to work, which is why I roll with an iPhone. Um, you know, I just want Facebook to work. I want to be able to share what's going on with me with my circle of friends. That's all I want. So if you break it up and you make it harder to do that, you make it less effective at doing that, then like, I'm just like random person. I'm like, why is this any better, right? What problem have you actually solved? So thanks for your time. Cool, thanks. All right, cheers, man. Yeah.